Welcome to another edition of the Mirabara Kasame District Football Network Show. Here with Yendi, as always, mate. Welcome aboard. I always love being around here. Great action in the, uh, the netball over the weekend, and uh, we're really starting to see the ladder take some great shape. Yeah, we are, and we've got the week off this week, so we've got a bit of time to breathe, but we did have some big results last weekend. Yeah, we certainly did. Uh, it was great to see uh, Natty Bielba really start to flex their muscles in a game that probably could have gone either way against uh, Molden. Uh, the Swans have shown some great potential this year, and to go out and win by 30 goals like they did is uh, to cement themselves in the top eight is fantastic for what they've been able to do. They've, they've lost uh, a couple of games uh, that could have gone either way, and uh, Molden's had some big scalps this year, including that of uh, Denoli, who have uh, basically really brought their downfall with Molden. So their best is really good. It was a shame they couldn't bring it on the weekend. And Navar, Jess Parry is back, can you believe it? Oh. I reckon it's been maybe seven or eight weeks since she had her first baby and she's back on court and absolutely blitzing it. Oh, absolutely. How, how good is that? It would be like any other mum out there. What's your excuse if you don't come back and come back with a vengeance like she has? And, and I think it's coincided with Navar's uh, rise in form as well. She just adds that little bit of extra presence in the team. It's probably what they needed. It's something they lacked earlier on in the year. Yeah, certainly. She's a league best and fairest winner of the our A grade competition a couple of times over, so going to add some class to their lineup. Definitely right there, and they had a really good polished win. And Newstead, uh, they pushed them to get within 13 goals is fantastic. But Navarra is certainly up and about. And one game we haven't mentioned: Campbell's Creek and Royal Park. Uh, the Creekers, they're on the board. This is. Uh, this is not a. This is not just a big win for the team, but it's a big win for the club because we know the footballers have gone through some tough times this year. But for the uh, for the A grade girls to finally get their first win of the season, something they've worked really hard towards all year. They they haven't been blown off the court in most of their games so far. They've actually been very competitive, and, and while Royal Park haven't had a really good year, to, to go out and win by a goal, I have no doubt that uh, Campbell's Creek they would have been buzzing as a club the other night, and it says a lot about their hard work. They haven't had a great year. But uh, as, a, as a club, but for that, that is fantastic. And the win in style, even better. Win's a win, Yandy. You'll always take it, won't you, mate? Absolutely right. And we had Avoca big winners over Tolbert. Yeah, certainly a great uh, great win there by Avoca. They are a fantastic side this year. At Tolbert uh, have, have sort of struggled. They've only got the one win and one draw on the board this year, but hopefully uh, their next win isn't too far away. But love Avoca, how they've gone about their business this year. They've uh, looking back around one, I saw them play there and they played some great uh, netball against Trenton. They really pushed them, bled for a lot of that game there. And so their best is really good. And to see them up around top three is fantastic for them. And we did have a couple of close games on the weekend. Obviously, Trentham and Carisbrook was the big one. Trentham got the points there. Yeah, exactly. This was, uh, this was a battle between the two undefeated sides. And Carisbrook had been in some pretty mean form in recent weeks. And, uh, and Trentham... To take a line out of Shano's book, uh, who, who runs the uh, the Ballarat competition, they're, they're just you know, ticking along, doing all the right things, doing what they had to do in uh, in some of their games this year. But to be pushed like they did is fantastic. And uh, we saw the cream of the crop. We probably saw a look into what uh, we might see in the, that last uh, Saturday on uh, of the competition. It's fantastic for them. Great, great game. And uh, and for the Saints to go undefeated uh, is fantastic. But. Yeah, only two goals. That's uh, that's nothing in netball. Yeah, that's it. They'll bounce back from that one, I'm sure. And also great to see a couple of our interleague players matching up on each other. I know Christy Park played well for Trentham, and Chrissy James was on form in the attacking circle for Carisbrook. The other close game, Lexton defeating Rovers, probably a bit of an upset there, Yeti. Yeah, no, a good good game by both sides. Uh, with Rovers, they've um, they're really starting to make that bit of a, a push later on in the uh, the year after a bit of a, a sluggish start. But this was a game that they really could could have gone either way. Lexton have, uh, have been promising. They took down Royal Park the previous week, started to build that confidence. But the way Rovers have been playing, they've uh, the, the, to, to get that win there, but in a tight contest was fantastic for uh, for them and they're really starting to get some of that big spark they're missing their key shooter from last year who was outstanding for them particularly uh, around the finals last year so to have to do a bit of restructuring up forward is fantastic for them and they're still hitting the scoreboard uh, up there was uh, on goal average up there with some of the best in the competition so that that win will do them really well they're, they're knocking on the door of the top four and I think it's looking pretty good and um, and I'm loving the work of, uh, of Harcourt as well it's uh, when you've sort of got Rovers trying to knock on the door of taking over over Harcourt is sitting in fourth spot and uh, their, their win over Denali on the weekend just shows that they are a, a good force as well. I'm really liking how Harcourt are going this year. Yeah, and it's a really good lead into our Queen's birthday break. 
Um, they're obviously the season shaping up quite nicely heading into the finals. Yeah, it certainly is, and the beauty is we're starting to. We've got probably ten teams at least that can uh, can make the finals this year. I know Molden and Lexton at their best. They've uh, they've beaten some really good sides above them this year. So if they can really start to play with that confidence. We might see that sort of go down to the wire. I, I know Newstead are still a couple of games out, but I just can't see them with their current form to, to knock on the door and really push there. But from what we've seen of Molden and Lexton this year, they're more than capable of even beating some of the, uh, the top six sides in the competition. So it's an exciting run towards the finals. We know we're at the halfway point of the season almost, and, uh, and it's only going to get more exciting, particularly after the break. Yeah, that's it. Well, we hope everyone enjoys their break. What are you up to? Are you doing anything, Simon? I'm uh, looking forward to watching some Ballarat footy and then heading down to the uh, heading down the Great Ocean Road for the weekend and kicking back and uh, enjoying some uh, camping in the winter, something I haven't done in my life. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. How about yourself? Uh, probably be pretty quiet for me, I think, but I will enjoy a much-needed rest. Oh, fantastic. I think we all will. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everyone, and have a good weekend.